Moving on with concavity and points of inflection. In the last video, we figured out the steps of finding concavity, and then we started an example, and we found the second derivative of the example. So we just finished up in step number two. So let's move on and let's finish up the rest of these steps here. So we found the domain. We found that we had a vertical asymptote at negative 2, and we found our second derivative was 8 over 3 times x plus 2 cubed. And if you need to see the work of that, again, that's in the last video. So we'll go ahead and set this equal to 0, and we need to solve this problem here. Okay. So when we solve this one, we know that we can do magic and eliminate the denominator. So basically, we just have the numerator equal to 0. It's almost like it's a trick question, though, because 8 cannot be equal to 0, meaning that we have no possible inflection points here. So... It is possible to not have any inflection points on your graph, and that is shown in this example. So that was step number three. So in step number four, we need to set up our number line. Well, you might think that we don't have anything to do on our number line here. In fact, we do. Remember, you also need to include your domain restrictions on your number line. So I have a vertical asymptote at negative two on this number line. So I need to test my concavity to the left of negative 2, and I need to test my concavity to the right of negative 2. And I'm going to do that by using test points of negative 3 for the left and 0 for the right. Now, I want to test this in the most factored form of my derivative, and this is my most simplified, which is also my most factored form. So I'm going to test it in there. It doesn't matter what I put into the numerator, it will always stay to be 8 or positive. So the only thing that I need to worry about is my denominator. Now again, it doesn't matter what I do with this 3, it will always stay 3, so it will always stay positive. So I just need to figure out what's happening here with this cubed piece. So if I plug negative 3 into this piece, into this piece, I get negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 1 or a negative. Now, if I take a negative an odd amount of times, that's going to end up to be negative. So positive divided by negative tells me negative. So this is negative here. Now, last time with increasing and decreasing, we drew a slope of the graph decreasing. But remember, this one we're doing concavity. So this negative tells us that our graph is concave down. So I'm going to draw something that's concave down like a frown. Now let me test my other piece. So if I plug 0 in here, that gives me 2 cubed or a positive cubed or positives in all of these places, which simplifies to be positive. So to the right of this graph, I'm concave up like a cup. And there we go. So that was 5, test my intervals. 6 is I need to figure out what my answers were. So if I need to figure out where this graph is concave up at, it goes from negative 2 to infinity. Where this graph is concave down at, and that is negative infinity to negative 2. And if it wants inflection points, then we saw earlier that we did not have any. The only place it switched between concavity is by my vertical asymptote. And so, there we go. We have the answer to this. The last thing that we need to do is we just need to confirm this with our graphing calculator. So let me go ahead and pull that up. So pulling this up here, I have my original function typed into my y equals. And if I were to graph this on my standard window, we see this here. We see that there's a vertical asymptote at negative 2, and it's concave down on the left like a frown or an angry eyebrow, and it's concave up on the right here. So that confirms with what we had on our graph. So we have finished up this example.